A uh, question here regarding someone being told by non-Shia men mm -hmm. that what Shia say mm -hmm. about the lady Fatima Zahra Flamullah Aleha and her story about the atrocities that befell her or were against her are not authentic. Can you please guide me in this matter? Mm. Not authentic. You see, to say that this or that is not authentic is easy to say, but difficult to prove. We challenge. Yes, we challenge. Means myself being a small servant of the followers of Ahlul Bayt. I challenge any scholar, any scholar to come in front of the screen, in front of people, and bring evidences that the atrocities committed against Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam after the passing away of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and his holy progeny, the atrocities are not authentic. I will show him what is in Sunni books. I don't bring any Shia book. I will only bring Sunni books to prove that Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam suffered from tremendous torture after her father's demise. In Bukhari itself, in Bukhari itself, Fatima alayhi salam demanded her right in Fadak and she was being denied. So she stopped talking to the person who refused giving her her right and she did not talk to him till the end of her life. That is in Bukhari itself. Let me give you the details of this evidence. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajjil farajahum. Go to Bukhari hadith number 2160. One six zero. Okay. Go to Hadith number three nine one three. Three nine one three. And watch very clearly. It says. This hadith is narrated from Aisha, daughter of Abi Bakr. Hadith number again, 3913. Aisha narrated that Fatima, daughter of the Prophet, sent to Abi Bakr a message asking him to give her her inheritance from the Prophet. And from the Khums of Khaybar, Abu Bakr did not accept He said that, according to him, the Prophet does not leave any inheritance. The hadith is long. I'll go to the end of it. 
فأبى أبو بكر أن يدفع إلى فاطمة منها شيئا أبو بكر refused to give فاطمة anything from what she demanded فوجدت فاطمة فاطمة became angry على أبي بكر against أبي بكر في ذلك فهجرته she boycotted him فلم تكلمه حتى توفيت she did not talk to him till she passed away all her life after the prophet she did not talk to him imagine why Fatima was being angered in Bukhari itself he narrated hadith from the prophet that Fatima is part of me the prophet says anyone who makes her angry made me angry and anyone who pleases Fatima, he has pleased me. This is in Bukhari itself. Also, go to Muruj al Dhahab by Al Mas'udi. Muruj al Dhahab by Al Mas'udi. He writes clearly. They attacked the house of Ali and they burnt the door of the house and they took him forcibly and they pressed Fatima between the door and the wall Hatta Askatat Muhsina. She miscouraged her child Muhsin in Al-Wafi Bil Wafayat by Safadi all these are Sunni books volume 6 page 76 when he mentioned Ibrahim bin Sayyar well known by al Nazam. He no quoted that someone, he mentioned the name, which I don't want to mention the name. It is there. If you go to the book, you'll see the name. The name, famous name. He has beaten Fatima on her abdomen till she miscouraged her son Muhsin when they wanted to take allegiance forcibly from them. Al-Milal wa nihal also well-known Sunni book by Shahristani, in volume 1, page 57. Also, he quoted from Nazam that Mr. X, the name is mentioned in the book, I don't want to mention the name, has beaten Fatima till she miscouraged her son Muhsin and that person was shouting أَحْرِقُوا دَارَهَا بِمَنْ فِيهَا burn her house with everyone in the house and no one was in the house but Ali, Fatima, Hassan and Hussein Ibn Abil Hadid Al Mu'tazili, volume 14, page 193. Also, he quoted the same tragedy which took place on Fatima. Tariq Al Tabari, very well known book of history, volume 3, page 203, the Arabic version. He said that. Mr. X, I don't mention the name, brought fire and wood and came to the house of Fatima and shouted, I will burn this house on everyone inside it if you people don't come out and give allegiance. 
he was being told in fil bayti la fatima fatima is inside this house how can you burn the fatima he said when so what that is in tarikh of tabari again volume 3 page 203 also, you find in volume 2 in Tarikh Tabari, page 233, that Mr. X, very well-known name of Saqifa, came to the house of Ali and said, Wallah, by Allah, I will burn this house on you those who are inside the house, if you don't come out and give allegiance to whom the Saqifa people wanted. We have in Al-Aqd Al-Farid by Ibn Abd Rabbih, volume 2, page 73, also, same incident of the fire brought to burn the house of Fatima and Ali. We have in Musannaf ibn Abi Shayba, who was one of the teachers of Bukhari. In volume 8, page 572, that Mr. X the name is mentioned in the book, came to the house of Fatima and Ali with the fire to burn the house if they don't give allegiance to Saqifa person. In Al-Isti'ab by Ibn Abd al-Barr, volume 1, page 298, that Mr. X came with a fire to burn the house of Fatima if they don't give allegiance to his man. In Kenz al-Ummal, volume 5, page 651, that Mr. X came with a fire to burn the house of Fatima and Ali to force them to give allegiance to his own man. Al-Mukhtasar fi Akhbar al-Bashar by Abu al-Fida, volume 1, page 107, same incident in Minhaj al-Sunnah by Ibn Taymiyyah the well-known enemy of Ahlul Bayt. Ibn Taymiyyah himself admitted that the house of Fatima was being raided. By whom? By the same group of Saqifa. It was being raided to take out any funds in the house. In Lisan Al-Mizan by Ibn Hajar Al-Asqalani, volume 1, page 111. Let me go back to Ibn Taymiyyah. Ibn Taymiyyah in Minhaj As-Sunnah, volume 8, page 291. 291, where Ibn Taymiyyah himself admitted that the house of Fatima was being raided. Ibn Hajar and Lisan al-Mizan also quoted from one of the narrators, Muhammad bin Ahmad bin Hamad al-Kufi, that he used to say that Mr. X kicked Fatima till she miscarried her son, Muhsin. Mizan al-A'tidal by al-Zahabi. And also 
Seer Alam and Nubala by Al Zahabi quoted the same from Muhammad bin Ahmad bin Hamad Al Kufi about the person who kicked Fatima's body and caused miscarriage of her son Muhsin. Al Mu'ajam Al Kabir by Tabarani, volume 1, page 17. Also, you find that last moments of the life of the first Caliph Abu Bakr, he said three things. I wish that I did not do them. First thing that he was repenting, he said, Wadattu, Wadattu. أن وددت أني لم أكشف بيت فاطمة I wish that I did not attack the house of Fatima This is in معجم الكبير معجم الكبير by Tabarani volume 1 page 17 My respected brothers I'm not quoting any Shia book I'm quoting only and only Sunni main books, most authentic books. So the list is very long. Hundreds of evidences in the Sunni books to prove the tragedies which took place on Fatima after the demise of her father. Who can say that it is not authentic? Then what is authentic? After all these evidences, and you claim it is not authentic? It is 100% authentic. And it is good to mention that one well-known Saudi scholar, Sheikh Hassan bin Salman al-Maliki in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, he himself said recently, and it has been published, go to the website, his own tweets, and you read what he has written. He said, in the beginning, I was hearing the Shias saying that Fatima suffered from a lot of atrocities. I was not sure about it. But when I myself researched this topic, I found in 27 Sunni narrations, I found that atrocities done against Fatima alayhi salam. Yes, please. Thank you very much indeed, Sayyidina. And of course, um, you've given um, many evidences uh, from, from these uh, uh, sources. Now, many of our uh, non-Shia viewers may be thinking, and, uh, and in fact should really not be astonished with uh, the information that you have uh, given knowing that from the beginning of Islam when that particular individual found out that his sister mm. had converted to uh, Islam, Islam yeah. he went and beat her yeah. so there, there's a you know there's you know it shouldn't be astonished that if an individual can go and beat his own sister yeah what would prevent that individual go and beat another female? Yeah. So it's just something that, you know, th these are big statements that our Islamic scholar has put forward. And of course, he speaks uh, with utmost respect and with, uh, with evidences. And indeed, it's for our viewers, Sayyidina, correct me if I'm wrong, to question their scholars, to question their leaders, their seniors, of what, uh, the, the Shia Muslims are claiming or, or the statements they are saying live uh, around the world is this true or not? We have no reason and we are not allowed even not mm -hmm. allowed to lie it is haram it is one of the major sins to lie we are saying nothing but the truth and our evidence is not only from our books only, no of course for us, what Ahlul Bayt said is enough. But when we want to prove to others, we bring evidences from their own books. 
that in the same way when the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his holy progeny, was proving to the non-Muslims, of course we are just giving example, the Prophet was proving to the people of <laughs> the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his or progeny, was proving to the people of book that Islam is the pure religion from Allah. He used to quote their own books. Their own books. We also quote the books of our brothers and sisters who don't believe in our books. We say, okay, then go to your own books and see why Bukhari has narrated that Fatima alayhi salam was angry with Mr. So-and-so and did not talk to him. As you know in Islam, the hadith, which is also in Bukhari, it is not allowed for a Muslim to boycott any other Muslim more than three days. لا يحل لمسلم أن يهجر أخاه المسلم فوق ثلاث. Not allowed for any Muslim to boycott another Muslim more than three days. Fatima boycotted that person of Saqifa for whole her life till the end of her life. In Bukhari. And in Bukhari itself, that anyone who makes Fatima angry, he has in fact made the Prophet angry. And making the Prophet angry make, means, as everybody knows, that Allah becomes angry if anyone annoys the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his holy progeny. Go to what we have mentioned, and what I mentioned is just small part. The list, list of evidences is very long, very long list to prove that what happened to Fatima السلام, after the demise of her father was unbearable. And that's why she passed away very early. She did not stay more than, say, six months, according to a narration, six months after her father. And she was young, just 18 years old. She was not an old lady or ill or having some problem. No, because of the atrocities done against her, she passed away so early. Thank you very much indeed, Sedna. We will take a caller uh, with us. Uh, Assalamu alaikum and thank you for waiting. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, please. I just wanted to say that Sedna Mawthabi, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's a most wonderful uh, way you have uh, taken the uh, curtain from the faces of Saqifa and uh, I uh, will appreciate that every time such question arises or somebody throws question, these references are very important. So the answer should be supported with these references which was very good indeed. And I would love to have a copy of these references. Uh, shall I leave my email in your office? You and can send an email. You can send an email to the program. Yeah. And okay. we will, inshallah, respond to your yeah. email. Or anyone who wants the references, yeah. we are more than happy to yeah. send the references to anyone who is yeah. interested. It is, it is very important that uh, we should l l let the Muslim world, Ummah, know that those people uh, who used to go wrong before Islam at Dawra Jahiliya, uh, sword waving and weak bread nishing people, uh, mafia type. The personality of our Prophet kept them uh, online, but as soon as our Prophet passed away, they went to their old ways. And this is uh, the ways now being copied by the Islamic State, so called Islamic State, and Daesh, etc., because they, they call them themselves Salafi. So, yes, they are Salafi because they are following these laws of their own. In fact, in fact uh, I would like to add two points here, my brother. Number one, the history of Muslims 
was always under control of the tyrant rulers. Tyrant rulers did not allow Muslims to know the facts about Islamic, Islamic history. The narration of hadith was banned. Books were not allowed, but only books written under the guidance and the control of the tyrant rulers. Books written by scholars who were not under the control of the tyrant rulers were being burnt. Look at the history. How many millions of books were being burnt in Cairo, in Baghdad, when the army of the enemies of Ahlul Bayt attacked those places, you found millions of books destroyed. Why? Because they contained knowledge which the tyrant rulers did not want Muslims to know about it. Now, in this time of the internet, books can be accessible easily. And now you can just sit at home and search for a few minutes or a few hours. You will find hundreds of evidences what happened. What happened during the life of the Prophet himself? What happened during the last moments of the life of the Prophet when the Prophet wanted Muslims to take down his last will? Who stopped the Prophet from writing his last will? And what happened after that? A lot of details are now being exposed for the first time to millions of Muslims who did not know. No one told them because very few Muslims who go and research inside the books and many of them, when they know about such facts, they keep it for themselves because they are scared from the harm. Now it is time to know the facts. Muslims need to know what is in their own books. We are here trying to invite every Muslim to know the reality of Islam and to know the root of terrorism. Daesh, ISIS are not the first people who are committing atrocities. Before Daesh was Yazid, and people on the same line of atrocities, who did a lot of atrocities against innocents. So Muslims should know the facts. Then they will know where is real Islam of the Prophet and where is the claimed history of people who had from Islam only the title but not the practice. Yes, please. Thank you very much indeed. We will take the next caller. Thank you for waiting. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Wa alaikum salam. Please go ahead. 